The First Congregation Church of New London, Connecticut collapsed on January 24th, 2024, and it was even captured on a security camera as well, taking down most of the front of this building as all the bricks and everything rolled down to the front lawn, almost down to the street. And they lost about three quarters of the roof in the process here. And now the city, of course, is demolishing the whole rest of the church. So what led to the demise of this once beautiful, soaring church, which has been a historical site since 1851? Well, it's up to you and me now to figure out what went wrong here with this church and what caused this church collapse. So let's take a look at the facts that we have so far, and let's see if we can't come up with our own root cause analysis of what took down this church and that steeple. Let's start off with the security camera video that captured this church collapse. So I've slowed it down 400% here, and here you can see that the steeple is starting to fall here. And it's sort of falling a little bit towards us, but a little bit more off to the left. And it's behind this parking garage. The parking garage is obscuring the full view for us. Okay, so to give us a better perspective here on the church, here's the part of the steeple that fell that we saw in the video earlier. And just to show you how close it was, these are the dorms next door, and it could have easily toppled over and fallen on this dorm here. But the video was shot from over here, pretty much on the other end of the block, on the other end here of this, which is known here as the Interdistrict School for Arts and Communication. The view that we saw was from over here, and there's the steeple. There's the steeple here, so this is pretty much almost exactly the view, and I believe it was shot from this camera that you see right here on the edge of the building. Now, if we step over just a little bit and take a look, there's that same camera. So it was shooting over this way towards the church, and the parking garage was sort of obstructing it. And then as you can see in the video, they were doing some sort of work here on the parking garage. Even the city said that there was no construction work being done on the church at all. Now, the New London Strong Facebook page, people were posting pictures left and right of what they had, past photos of the church and everything. This shows a great view from the opposite side of the camera. So here's the steeple. And then if you look way over here, that security camera was right here, right where my arrow is pointing, right on the corner of that red brick building. And it was aimed this way across the garage over here to the steeple. Now, what we want to do is look at that video again real quick, a freeze frame. And I want to show you here how much of the steeple was actually still intact as it was falling. Okay, so now we come back here to the front and we look, and it looks to me like, as far as we can tell from that video, it seemed to have cut off around here. So we know that at least from here up, this steeple was completely intact. So did it break? Did it just disintegrate? What happened to it? Did it just fall straight down here? Where's the church? Who took the steeple? Religion's in the hand of some crazy. Let's take a look at this drone footage that was captured of the scene as it's flying around the building here. So you can see they had uh, multiple aerial towers set up from the fire department. And you can tell here it just appeared to have fallen backwards slightly and taken out the entire three-quarters front section of the roof. And just look at how close this damage came to hitting the brick dorm building right next door. Look at this, the rubble just rolled right up against it and didn't even look like it made a scratch. I mean, talk about a miracle there, how nobody got hurt and how no debris came crashing down onto the, to the street out in front either. And as we fly around the backside, you can see how just that, that whole slate roof was just totally smashed in. But yet, look how strong that's, that frame structure is on the roof. Because look, aside of a steeple falling in on it, that back roof really hung in there. And so did the two towers on either side. So pay attention to that, because that will come into play. And then look on either side of the hole there on the two towers at the bottom. There's a little bit of the front wall still there. So this structure was actually reasonably strong, considering... So looking at the aftermath here, now that the fire department arrives, it looks like most of the steeple kind of fell slightly back and into the church. And all of this damage that you see here on the front, all of this rubble is from the front wall of the church. So if we go and take a look here at what it looked like before, see that all of this wall. So this looks to be about maybe 20 or 30 feet tall, somewhere in there. But you can see how this whole wall got ripped away as the steeple fell backwards. And But amazingly though, 
is how tough the rest of this church structure was because if you see right here this is part of that wall that's still left here and this is part of it too so it seems like everything above these arched doorways got taken out and everything from about the level of the arched doorways and below is still there and i'm willing to bet that the wall is still there and that this rubble is just in front of it so we're talking about everything here from the arches up got taken out as the steeple fell backwards it ripped apart all of these walls here and even the side to side supports so this part of the the roof gable here these two wall sections right here do a great job of holding the steeple steady side to side so unfortunately there was nothing to hold it going backwards all of this got ripped out as the steeple fell and yet these two towers here held their ground these two things were built for the tough and they just did not budge. Even though they had their walls ripped off of them by the steeple, the weight of that huge steeple falling down, these guys just stood there and laughed, said, ha, death, where is thy sting? And then this section right here looks to be maybe right over the arched door of the front door. Yeah, see, I think it's this section right here. So it seems like everything from this level here fell forward, rolled down the steps, and came down the front lawn and just about stopped right at the level of the steps here and didn't leave the church property. That's what I thought was just amazing here with this collapse. So I've taken this Google Maps photo here and what I did was I stripped out just the steeple part here, see, so I can move it anywhere I want. And what I wanna show you is, is what I think happened to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here then is see I can rotate it like this to simulate the collapse. So what it looks like from the video was that it probably started to fall back to about this spot right here okay but remember it was also sinking it was going like this so probably the most likely thing that it was doing here it's just started to sink and as it sank it was starting to fall backwards when it got to about this point here as the video shows is when the top of the spire here started to disintegrate and just fall straight down so I think pretty much all of this fell right through here the front part of the roof and the remaining 25% of the roof was left intact. All right, now check out this picture that the Associated Press took from a couple of buildings over. And as we zoom into the pile here, look what Jeff found, everybody. Looky what we have here. This right here is that golden orb or the ball, or whatever you want to call it. Some people call it the finial and point. Some people refer to this as the cross-bearing orb, but either way, it's the top of our steeple. So as you remember here, this was the top of it right here, the very top, that's the ball from the top. So that means I was correct when I said that, hey, it probably ended up in this position and then everything just dropped straight down through the roof here. So this picture here, agrees exactly with my hypothesis there of the angle at which the steeple was when that when the ball dropped literally um, other things you can see here in the picture is this window frame looks like it just slid right down from there and there was another one that was right here in the middle the one over here is still there so it really looks like to me everything in the in the steeple stayed inside the church building and all of the rest of this is just the wood and the debris came crashing through the exterior wall forcing it outward so what i want to know is where are the clocks they're probably Probably buried back in here somewhere would be my guess to give you a point of reference here here's the other two towers and remember the steeple was standing right here between these two so it looks like it leaned from there over to about here and that's when it disintegrated and snapped and then the top of it just fell that way and all the rest of it at that point must have just crumbled and dropped vertically right here. But you can see the rest of everything else here. The walls are just, they're still intact. The back of these towers, they're all perfect. I don't even see any cracks on these towers. And whoa, does the plot thicken here, folks? Because somebody with some amount of brains 175 years ago from day one said that there was something wrong with this church steeple. And he said that it had to come down and be redone all over again. So I started looking around to find out what evidence we could find that might lead to the cause of this collapse here. And Yahoo had called in this article here. It looked like it was from the day from London, Connecticut. And it says the first congregation church steeple was deemed unstable in 1851. I'm like, what? And so they had gotten an email of a letter dated in 1951 from the original architect of the church, Leopold Eidlitz. He wrote gravely that the only sure remedy was to take down the whole of the steeple and tower and have it rebuilt by a more competent and reliable person than your general contractor. Whoa! 
And I thought, holy cow, man. I know we had shoddy construction here in South Florida, but I didn't know that they had it as far back up north as 1851. This is 175 years ago. By the way, I think they spelled Leopold wrong here. Because when you look here, it, it's, it should be spelled Leopold. You can see some of the works that he's done. He did the New York State Capitol. He did P.T. Barnum's house in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And of course, numerous temples and churches. And look at this. It says here that Idlet said in his letter he had consulted about the problems with the construction of the New London Church in ways to correct them with famed New York architect Richard Upjohn who designed Trinity Church. That's that famous church that's right at the bottom of Wall Street there. And what's interesting was this letter was sent to them by an employee of an engineering firm called Silver Petrocelli and Associates. They're in Hamden, Connecticut, and they do all sorts of engineering, but the church had hired this company back in 2010 to determine if the building was structurally sound or not, and they issued a report saying that it was okay. So now I'm kind of wondering, well, what was in that report, and what did they base it on that they gave that building the okay, and they said there was no problems with it, especially since we know that the building was built with inferior construction. But look at this. It says here, the letter opens by saying the walls of the tower had parted in several places because of defective masonry and lack of sufficient bonds in the walls. They succeeded in staying the progress of the parting of the walls with an iron anchor. So I'm not sure how much of this they implemented, how it was implemented. I would like to see the original drawings of what was done. I'd, I would love to see the original plans of the church. I don't even know if anybody still has that. Uh, it says, but he went on to explain that the only sure remedy was to take down the whole tower and rebuild them properly. Wow. So that tells us all right off the bat that there was just numerous problems with this. So, man, I would sure love to get a hold of the original copy of this letter to see what all the architects said in there. And you know what's interesting is when I look here at the Google street maps and I take a close-up view of the front of the building and especially on the steeple, I don't see any cracks anywhere. Not not one. There's like no smoking gun. But I'll tell you what I do see, which is kind of interesting, is by the front door over the archway. This looks like one of those post-tension rods or a cap for one, you know, and this looks like it could be another one. So it looks like some things have been done over the years and same with right here as well. I'm seeing these guys, so I don't know if these are caps for other post-tensioning rods or not and i'm seeing some of these other little rods it looks like that, that have been forced in through certain spots random spots here so this might have been some of the stuff that was done originally to help correct what the architect had pointed out but i don't see what looks like any failing stones to me no cracks nothing nothing that would give a, a real smoking gun that said oh that's it right there there's nothing on here that would give us any kind of indication so just remember everything seems to have ripped from here upward from this point upward remember according to the video this this whole steeple just kind of sank so that makes me wonder too you know when i look at these steps look how you got big cracks right here on the steps never were fixed now i don't know what it's like underneath or behind them could water get in there and then saturate even more underneath and leak somewhere into the basement and cause more damage and then eventually everything just starts sinking here uh, we don't know i know it looks like there's a retaining wall behind this front lawn which is an elevated front lawn but you know look when you have years and years of, of water and rain and stuff coming down we don't know what is being done underground what's happening to the ground below it is it stable or is it not and then also when i come to the side street and take a look behind the steeple here where the roof meets it it's hard to tell. I, mean, I don't really see, again, there's there's no smoking gun damage, no large cracks or anything opening up. And there, it, there does look like there's some evidence of water continuously running down here. Maybe some rust right here. Don't know if it's coming from these right here, but there's just simply nothing here that says, oh, I'm the cause. Now, the mayor of New London in one of the press conferences said that some people had reported seeing that the spire was leaning. So I started looking at some of the pictures posted in the Facebook group. Like, here's one here, and it does sort of look like it's leaning backwards a little bit, and that would be in the direction that it fell, too. So what I did was I zoomed in on it, and right here I, I put my vertical lines, and it does kind of look like it is leaning a little bit. See how, do you see how the left edge here becomes more of a pie shape? And then same on the right edge as the bricks begin to emerge to the right of that 
that yellow line there. So you can tell what I did with my reference lines. They're perfectly vertical here on this steeple on this building. It lines up with the edge of this building. It lines up with this steeple over here. That's perfectly vertical. So there's really no lens aberrations that I could see here. And this building here is pretty vertical too, but it's only the steeple that looks like it's out of vertical. And look here, if I go right here and just put a line through the middle of the clock, you can see how it misses the center of the two openings there. And then here's two other pictures I found that were taken from a similar angle on the roof of the city hall next door. And if you look at this one here on the left, it looks like the same thing, that it's slightly off of vertical. Not as easy to tell because you're looking at it at an angle, but when you're looking at it head on, on this picture on the right, you can definitely see it. It looks like it's leaning backwards a bit. And this photo on the right was shot in October of 2023. And remember that it collapsed on January 24th, 2024, just a couple of months later, two months later. We don't know when this one on the left here was photographed. And then here's another photo that somebody had posted taken from across the river looking back at it. And you can see it does look kind of like it's leaning a little bit to the right, whereas all the other spires and towers and buildings are going completely straight vertical here. So, but the, you know what? Buildings lean all the time without failing. Just look at the Tower of Pisa. It's leaning way more than that, and it's still standing after hundreds of years. Okay, so to try to figure out what might have triggered the actual collapsing, look at what we're dealing with here. So it's built on this concrete slab at the top of the small hill. And then there's two possibilities here. Either it could be sitting over a basement, or it could be sitting directly over soil. We don't know. So if this is the case where it's over the basement, it could be a slab and maybe there's a downstairs beneath it. And if that's the case, if that should give way, that slab right there, this is what would happen. You'd see it start to drop like this. And then of course it would, as it's dropping tilt, like we saw in the video, and then the rest is history. Okay, but what about the case where it's on soil? So here's our mound. You know, of course there's a concrete sidewalk and everything. But I'm saying just what if there's soil beneath this instead of a basement? Well, then if that's the case and if there's settling over here underneath your soil and then it starts to drop down like that because of it. And, and again, it doesn't need to drop much, probably only a few inches. And then it just starts tilting and then disintegrates. Because remember, once you have any kind of drop at the bottom here, the disintegration is going to happen probably rather quickly. If the original architect was correct and you have all of those bad mortar joints and bad masonry, it probably won't take much to make some of these start to break. Another scenario here is, as you know, this steeple is made up of a, all of these granite stones. And I believe they're granite. And I think they were all milled from the same quarry not too far up the road in Connecticut. This is the way they're mounted, just kind of like bricks. You, you have your quarry and you've got your mortar joints in between there. And this is what they would normally look. And if you have high quality mortar joints, everything should stay working just fine here. But supposing down near the bottom, you start to get a few of them that maybe the mortar joints fail and they start to collapse down a little bit. So now look what you have. You could lose an inch here. You could lose an inch here. You could lose an inch here and an inch here. Now you're suddenly a few inches off and the tower is going to start to lean a little bit. And so this could be what set the whole thing off. This could be here what set that whole collapse of this steeple in motion. And another thing too, make sure you let us know in the comments below here what you think was the cause of this church steeple collapse. So thank you so much for joining us tonight, folks, and we'll see all of you on the next one.